这么熟了吗？三个，三个。走起来啊！注意点什么？走了，兄弟。Hello, Antonio Persepo, the monk from Brooklyn. Ever since coming to Asia years ago, I wanted to try Chinese wrestling, Swai Jiao. I'd seen it on TV, I wanted to do it, but there were a lot of problems in finding a master. For example, they don't have websites, they don't use email, and they didn't speak English. So it took me years to learn Chinese, and then to learn Chinese well enough that I was able to go on the internet and do some Google searches in Chinese to find my current master. And I study under Long Shifu, and he's a disciple of Grandmaster Wang, Wang Wenyong. Who is one of the most famous uh, wrestlers who still lives? He is 83 years old right now, the Grandmaster. Anyway, I came to the wrestling school, and I really have no background in wrestling. Now, I fought MMA, and I had about one year of very intensive MMA training where I lived in an academy, so I learned a little bit of grappling. And grappling is my favorite component of MMA, but actually, I have no grappling background at all no wrestling, no jiu jitsu, nothing before I came to MMA. So when I transferred from MMA now to Chinese wrestling, the goal was to try and learn the Chinese techniques which all involve just throwing. It's just throwing. There's no uh, submissions, there's no pins, it's just you throw the opponent down. And I thought if I could learn these kind of takedowns and then I could translate them into MMA fighting or use them for MMA moves. Now, as you see, we wear this heavy jacket just like in uh, judo or something. And you, know, you grab the jacket when you throw the guy. So, so all the throws then have to be modified to fight against an opponent who's not wearing a jacket. I found out that three days a week, all the old shifus come here, and we have sort of competitive sparring. And the goal is 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 to win. And, and I know usually in sparring, you don't want to try to win. You want to try to learn. But, but the, the goal in this sparring is really kind of to win because all the sheep was there and they clap if you do well and they scold you if you don't do well. Sometimes they beat you with the belt if you, if you don't do well. So when I came, the very first day I already had sparring. And so the first couple of opponents I went against were the two biggest guys on the team. They're both uh, quite a bit taller than me, uh, at least my weight or more. And they had a lot of experience in training. And they just threw me and threw me and threw me. And, uh, and in all honesty, I didn't resist very much because I didn't understand how the jacket worked. I was very, very concerned about like breaking my fingers, for example, if they got tangled up in the jacket. Uh, I didn't know how the throws were going to work or what they really looked like. And you know, you, you know, somebody grabs you and you start pulling away, and next thing you know, he wanted you to pull away because you know he's going to trip you down. So I wanted to just get a feeling for the for the wrestling. So I really didn't resist that much. So they just bam, 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 slam me every time. But when you fight one opponent, you fight for five rounds. Uh, a round ends when somebody gets thrown. So rounds can sometimes be seconds or maybe a very long round, be a minute, minute and a half. So I did five rounds against each of the two biggest guys. They slammed me every time. Then they had me fight some of the smaller guys because everybody fights everybody, regardless of size. And when I started fighting the smaller guys, I started fighting back a bit using freestyle type wrestling techniques and I was able to win a few of the rounds. Now, the problem I have with that is that I'm here to learn Chinese wrestling. I'm not here to beat somebody. I'm not here to compare Chinese wrestling to freestyle wrestling because, you know, they're different sports and you know, I'm here to learn this. And I want to learn this. And I want to win their sport their way because that's something I'm here to learn. And I'm not here to just prove something. And so on the one hand, I felt a little bad about using my technique, but the flip side is I had nothing else. That's what I have. I have that. I have the little bit of freestyle wrestling that we learned in MMA training. And like I said, I've never done real freestyle wrestling. So I kept doing things like, like that, you know, that would take a leg, I would do body lock, uh, or try and get behind the opponent and lift him and throw him. So I did a lot of sort of lifting and slamming type techniques, which is what I do in my, my MMA training, my MMA fights. After that, the sheep was really talked to me a lot and they counseled me about look, this is how you how you grab the jacket. There's 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 specific grabs that you do on the jacket and we practice those and they give me the DVDs to watch, the Grandmaster, and you know, I was watching all the DVDs about the different throws, and I can't actually say I learned throws from watching the DVDs, but 
I started learning more what to expect. And so then the second day of sparring and the third day and the fourth day and whatever, whenever they would, they would throw me, I would be a little smarter about how to counter the throw. So then I started getting a few points by countering the throw and going down with, with the opponent but, but staying on top. In other words, if, if, if the opponent throws you on the ground, he gets two points. If he throws you and you both fall, uh, it's only one fall. So I, I, was, I was getting better about either defending the takedown or taking the guy down with me or sometimes even uh, defending and going down you know, on top of it. And so, so I would get one point and get zero. So, you know, as we progress, that's what happened. Now the last couple of days of sparring, once or twice, or a few, maybe more than once or twice, a few times I used the Chinese technique, and I'm sure it wasn't correct, but it was on the way to being correct. The Chinese techniques involved in sort of uh, sweeping, but, but these sweeps are just very sort of muscular, like, 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 like really ripping the guy's leg out from under him, you know, and, and, um, and, and yet not using any strength. It's, it's a very interesting, weird kind of way of, of, of wrestling. And, these moves have to be practiced thousands of times uh, in the air, as they say in Chinese, in English we say shadow boxing. Practice by yourself uh, a million times to build the muscle strength, the tendons, uh, the flexibility to be able to actually do the moves. So some of the moves, there's corresponding exercise, and I can't do that exercise yet. So guess what? That means I can't do that move yet. So I, so now the seafoods are kind of uh, concentrating on teaching me a few moves very slowly, but teaching me the ones that match exercises that I'm already doing well. Or uh, there are leg grabs in Chinese wrestling, and there are take the back type maneuvers, and there are you know locking up like 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 I would I would normally lock up like this. I'd, I'd catch a tricep and an underhook, right? But in, um, in Chinese wrestling, well, you can lock up too. You grab the back of his jacket or the front of his jacket. It's the exact same. Everything else is the same. So they're teaching me that, that sort of the Chinese moves that sort of parallel things I'm familiar with, and especially about uh, taking one leg. Because the guys, um, although they're allowed to take the leg, they don't seem to do it very often. So that seems to be a boy very often very vulnerable. Sometimes they'll be going for a throw, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful throw, but he's left his leg out there, and they whoop, just grab it, and, you know, and I get the throw. So, yeah, it's been a really cool experience, and um, the two big heavyweights, they still beat me up every single time. I haven't taken either of them down yet, you know, and uh, so that's kind of my goal. That's my goal. But um, right now, this is the end of the third week. Tomorrow is my 46th birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Brooklyn Road. Uh, this is the end of my third week of training, and I had one week in between where I went home to Shanghai and I just practiced all the exercises, like two hours, two and a half hours a day for a week alone, and then I came back. This is the end of my third week, so as I said, I'm starting to use the jacket grabs more, I'm starting to use the Chinese uh, techniques more. <laughs> in which you learn this art is that you begin to see the moves in advance and defend them and then maybe the next one is you can reverse them and then eventually you can do them yourself. Maybe that's the order in which this happens. That seems to be the order in which it's happening for me. This is the beginning of a three-year process where I will be writing about and documenting all forms of Chinese ethnic wrestling. So I plan to do this with the Chinese ethnic group, with the uh, Mongolian ethnic group, the Korean ethnic group here in China, with all the different ethnic groups, maybe with the Uyghur group as well, and doing this in all different parts of China and kind of documenting the wrestling as I go. And I'll continue studying. I became an official student of the Grand Master. And I'll continue studying Chinese traditional wrestling, and I'm concentrating on that, and I've stopped fighting. Uh, even stop doing the main training just to concentrate on wrestling. And then uh, next week I'll be back in Shanghai and I'll also be studying modern wrestling in Shanghai. We'll probably do some videos about that. I'm the Brooklyn Monk. Thanks for stopping by. And hey, stay classy. No, no, it's taken. And that's the way it is. December, no, 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 it's not good.